What's up guys, Tyler here from the Rise Hunt. Today I'm gonna do a little uh, breakdown of filming your deer hunts. Today I wanna break down the camera gear that I used, the camera arms, pretty much all the equipment that I bring in the woods with me, all the way down to my backpack, the brands that I prefer to use, which lenses I'm using, all the nitty gritty, all the stuff I like to geek out on when it comes to filming your deer hunts is all gonna be in this video. All right, first off I have the Panasonic GH5. It's it's a great camera. I think this body is 12, 1300 bucks. Don't hold me to that. I'm not gonna get real specific on the pricing of everything here. I'm more or less just gonna run through all of my camera gear. I, I've i always liked Panasonic cameras. They're really nice. A lot of cinematographers and guys who shoot, you know, short films and that type of stuff really tend to go towards Panasonic. There's pros and cons to every camera, but this camera here has been great for me for filming deer and it also shoots frame rate slow motion. So if you're looking for those really slow motion cinematic shots, um, this shoots uh, 1080 and 120 frames per second or 160, I can't remember, but it's a really high frame rate in full HD. Uh, if you're looking for those really cool slow motion shots that you guys probably see on social media and a lot of big hunting shows, it does that. It is a micro four thirds mount camera, so everything is cropped. I'm running the 45 to 175 zoom lens, so I got a ton of zoom on here. So you actually would like pretty much double these numbers, 45 to 175 comparable to like a Canon lens. Has a ton of zoom, and one of my favorite features about this zoom lens, is you can actually just run the zoom right here on this, so you don't actually have to turn the lens. You can actually just, if you got deer out there, you can reach up and you can zoom right in, that's super convenient. I will say a downside to this camera is pretty much all Panasonic's. It's not specific to this camera, but the Panasonic's don't have the best autofocus. So I'm running manual focus probably 95% of the time that I'm running this camera. So you're gonna wanna have some sort of basic video knowledge because if you have deer in front of you and a food plotter in the woods, not only are you running the zoom, but you're trying to run the focus, it pretty much requires two hands to run this camera. Granted, if you are hunting a big open field edge, you can run autofocus, it does a little bit better on you know, a big open space, but when you get into tight trees and stuff, it gets pretty tricky. So this camera I run probably 95% of my deer hunts. A, just because I'm so familiar with it, I like it. I have a ton of zoom. It does decent in, in low light. It's not great, but it's decent, I suppose. And um, overall, overall, a really good good camera. I think, I think you can pick these up used now for like maybe six, 700 bucks for the body. This lens is maybe 500 bucks brand new, so it's not, it's not crazy expensive for, for what you're getting. The nice thing is like older these cameras get, more the price comes down. I had the GH4 prior to the GH5. Upgraded to the GH5 and I was gonna get the GH6, but I ended up going with the camera that I'm shooting right now, which is the Canon R5. Uh, I had to break the bank to get that thing and I'm still saving for some lenses, but that's gonna be my primary. Uh, that I'm running the Canon R5 this year, and I will still run this sometime. This is one camera I'm running. The Canon R5 is the other camera. And third is a GoPro 10. These GoPro 10s are awesome. I used to have a GoPro 7, which is here, is which I've ran the last, I don't know how many years. It's been a good camera. It's a good second angle camera. My, the downside to them is the batteries die. They're junk. <laughs> you gotta charge them or run a charger with you pretty much the whole time you're hunting. It's kind of annoying. GoPro fixed it a little bit with this one. A little bit better battery life. I really like the whole media mod setup. You could run a set of wireless mics or hell, you could run a shotgun mic or something crazy to it if you wanted to, but this little shotgun mic works pretty well. So I'm gonna be running this as like my secondary. I'll run this up in the tree behind me and I'll just use this little HME uh, screw tree mount. So I'll screw that into the tree and then obviously I got the tripod adapter here and then obviously I have that screwed into the tree up behind me. And basically that's just like my bailout camera. Big camera, I kind of say this quite a bit, but this is kind of like plan A is to get the deer killed on this camera. But if something were to happen fast, then I kind of got my plan B camera up over my shoulder. That's gonna kind of capture everything that I might miss. The Canon R5 that I'm running right now is crazy. And I would say 90% of the reason I jumped up to the Canon R5 was basically because when I shoot slow motion or frame rate videos, I could not get 4K. It was driving me crazy that when I would film 4K with the GH5 and I wanted to uh, shoot 4K slow, slow motion, it wouldn't do that. So I had to jump up to the Canon R5 that I could shoot 4K in 120 frames per second. So that way all my footage kind of all matches and it, and it looks really nice. So that's 90% of the reason why I switched over to that camera. 
The downside to the Canon R5 is that it's massive. The, the body's massive, the lenses are massive, it's super heavy. That's kinda the next thing I'm gonna jump into is, is camera arms. When I'm hunting public land, or let's say I'm going in and I'm taking a tree stand with me, I gotta take a tree stand and sticks and camera gear and all this stuff, probably not taking the R5. Probably gonna take the GH5. It's a lot lighter, a lot more packable. I have two different complete filming setups. One is small and light and compact. If I have to go in on some public land and I gotta take a tree stand and I have to do that. My other set is if I'm maybe hunting my private land where I have you know, a redneck blind set up or I have a permanent stand that's already been hung and I can kind of come in there and I'm not carrying as much weight. So I have a really heavy setup and I have a really light setup depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing. And, and honestly, it's pretty similar results. It's just kind of different you know, applications, I guess you'd say, if you are hunting private or public, or you wanna go in light, you wanna go in heavy, if you're, you know, just, it kinda of depends like what you wanna do. So I'll kinda of run through each of these setups and kinda of just tell you guys the difference and why I run what I run. My light setup is the Panasonic GH5 with the 45 to 175 lens. I'll run that with the GoPro up behind me for my secondary. And then I run a Manfrotto B-Free Live fluid head. This head I believe is 0.8 pounds. It weighs nothing, which is super nice, but it supports that camera pretty well. It would support a small video camera, would support your phone, would support anything that you want to run on here. Nice light head. And this is the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Pocket Arm. Picked this up a couple years ago as soon as it came out. This arm weighs nothing. I can put it in my fanny. I don't even know it's there. So this, the fluid head, the GoPro, the camera, Seems like a lot of stuff, but this stuff's pretty light. Like there's not a lot of weight to this. So you can actually run a pretty nice light setup. Something I'll also run with that is a zoom controller. Zoom controllers are really convenient because if you're trying to zoom in on a deer, you can actually push, you can zoom in on the deer without having to reach up to the lens. You can also hit record and that plugs right into the camera. It makes it pretty convenient, but you have to have a zoom lens, a power zoom lens to do so. So when I'm running the Panasonic, I'll run the Liebeck zoom controller. Always run a shotgun mic. This is pretty much the majority of what I'm gonna be running 99% of the time, unless for some reason I have a wireless mic on. You know, if I'm whispering in the tree, oh, here comes a big bug. You still wanna be able to hear that audio. Well, if this is mounted on the camera and it's three and a half foot away from me and I whisper, that shotgun mic's not gonna pick it up very well. So I really like to run the wireless mics. It kind of captures that realness of, of what's happening and you kind of get a little bit better audio running it that way too. I think it's the Rode Go 2s that we're gonna be running this year. They're nice, light, little, small, compact wireless mics. But that is pretty much the small setup that I'm gonna run if I had to take in a tree stand or if I had to hike two miles back in the woods. All this equates to maybe a few pounds. I would say probably three pounds. Pretty much everything I just showed you. Which isn't, which isn't too crazy. So that is pretty much my light setup. And for my heavy setup, I am running the fourth arrow. This is the stiff arm. Obviously this arm, arm's pretty light, but what gets heavy is your base. This base is pretty dang heavy. So obviously your cam camera arm goes here in your base. And this is the Talon, the 3.0, the newer one. And then obviously you got your ratchet strap. So this will strap to the tree, connect. And then this is the MVH 500 AH Manfrotto fluid head. So this is a pretty heavy duty head. I think it holds up to 10 pounds, like big, heavy cameras, heavy lenses. The one thing I would notice, or I would say the difference between running this setup compared to the small pocket arm is being that much bigger, that much heavier, it supports more weight, it's more stable. When you grab a hold of this guy right here and you move it, it's a lot more still. You can actually you know, capture the footage quite a bit smoother if you had to pan in a tree or if you're trying to zoom in or zoom up or down. Just being, being that it's a bigger head, it's gonna be that much more smooth. With the smaller arm and the lighter head, might be a little more shaky and you know jolty, I guess, with the video, so. And obviously with running the, the Canon R5 on this head, this uh, fluid head arm and this setup, it, you need a bigger, heavier setup to support that camera. So that's kind of my thought process with uh, the two different setups. The light setup is the pocket arm of the GH5. The heavy setup is the Canon R5 with the big stiff arm and the big fluid head, 3.0 tail and arm. And as well, I'll be running the GoPro 10 as a secondary. 
unless for some reason I decide I want to run the GH5 with like a 14 millimeter lens on it. I'll run two DSLRs, one as a secondary, just so I can get that 4K 60P and I can run a shotgun mic to that camera and I can run a wireless mic to this camera or vice versa. If I'm going to a redneck blind or a ground blind or a hay bale blind or something along the lines of that, I will be going to a a blind, so I'm gonna need a tripod. So I have two different tripods as well. This is a super light compact tripod, weighs a pound and a half. And then I also have another tripod. This one weighs about five pounds, quite a bit different, different applications. Same thing, uh, that's my light setup. This is my light tripod. If I gotta pack in two miles, heavy one. If I'm going to a redneck blind that's only 100 yards off the road, I, I can carry as much weight as I want. I'm not gonna sweat, it doesn't matter. I can run either head on these, but the smaller tripod, I'll typically run the Manfrotto Be Free Live, which is the 0.8 pound head. And when I'm running the big heavy one, going to a redneck blind or something, I'll run the heavier head because, you know, why not? So even my tripods, I pretty much have two setups from camera arms to tripods to cameras and fluid heads. Like there's two complete different setups and two complete different applications for filming your deer hunts. And it really comes down to weight and and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to capture. That's more or less my breakdowns of my cameras and what I'm using, the gear I'm using. Next thing I wanna dive into is the different backpacks. So the backpacks that I'm running are made from Badlands gear. This is the Badlands Tree Hugger. It is essentially a fanny pack. It's pretty small, compact, light backpack. It's straight up a fanny. It's got a big old tote in the bottom of this thing. And I can pretty much just load all of this gear in here I normally rock my camera. My camera's not the nicest camera in the world, but I normally just like wrap like a t-shirt or a microfiber over it. And I'll make sure that goes right to the bottom so it's nice and protected. And then the camera arm, I can actually strap right to the bottom of this pack. It's got those two little buckles down there. So I won't even, actually I can put the fluid head on the camera arm and I can strap all that right to the bottom of the fanny. So my camera gear and all my stuff goes right in here and the fluid head and the camera arm is not bashing on the camera and the GoPro, so that's kind of nice. This is the light setup. Again, if I have to go a mile or two miles deep, this is the fanny, this is what I'm, what I'm running. Wanna be lean and mean, that's what, uh, what I'm using for the light setup, the first setup I showed you. All right, for the heavy setup is the Badlands Capture Pack. This is the over the shoulder. Pack's really cool because it was actually designed for people who are filming their hunts or capturing and filming Filming anything, it's, it's a camera bag that's made for hunters and camera guys. This top loading piece here is super nice. This is made literally for your camera. You can put your camera right in this top here and nothing else is gonna hit it. Boom, right there. You know, if something had to happen, you had to pull it out quickly, you could. It's made just for cameras, which is nice. Cause I, I like that a lot. You know, if I'm running my expensive Canon R5, it can sit up there by itself, which it does fit. I did check. It's kind of nice and protected. Same thing with the bottom here, with all the Badlands straps. You can strap pretty much anything you want to the bottom of these. So sometimes if I'm taking in some gear, you know, a, ho a hoodie or an extra garment or whatever the heck it is I'm bringing, I strap all that stuff to the bottom. But this big center piece here, big old storage in here, this is where all this heavy stuff goes. I pack all this in here, zip that up, obviously. And then camera arm goes on the side here. Same with the fluid head. Normally I have the fluid head connected, but I'll strap everything to the side just kind of like this. So this pack fits that entire heavy setup. Oh, I'm about to drop stuff. <laughs> this pack fits the entire heavy setup all in here and that's over the shoulder. Like I said, I'm not going very deep when I'm taking this pack or this setup or even if I am going deep and I wanted to carry the weight and carry the big heavy stuff, I still could. But this is the pack and this is the variation of how I would pack everything in. So two different backpacks, even as well as my filming setup. For my light setup with the Fanny, heavy setup with the capture pack, both by Badlands, really good stuff. I don't know if you guys know too much about Badlands, but they are awesome, lifetime unconditional warranty on all their packs, all their gear, make some really quality stuff. If you guys have any questions, or if you guys like this video, first like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below. We're trying to actively grow our YouTube page and we're trying to push some videos out, been slacking pretty bad, but I hope this helps anyone who is interested in filming their hunts and kind of what gear to buy. I'll put links down below. I pretty much have no affiliation with any of these brands um, when it comes to camera, camera gear, or cameras, or so all my opinions are all non-biased. I'll drop all the links below to everything that was shown in this video. 
Like I said, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you guys like this video, I hope you do. I can always make more of them. I don't know how far you want me to deep dive. I could keep going and going and hell, I could jump into Premiere and I could show you how a video or a hunt gets put together. Whatever it is, you guys let me know. Drop it in the comments. Appreciate you guys and good luck hunting this fall.